So, in these austere times, how is the Congress saving money on NASA? Well, a few weeks ago, the House proposed to pull a few hundred million from the NASA budget to fund community policing. Don't the Republicans run the House now? Yes. Don't Republicans think that community policing is a local responsibility, and not a federal one, to be funded by robbing the NASA piggy bank? One would think so, by their rhetoric, but 70 of them voted for it. Including many who claim to be conservatives. So what else is Congress doing to save money on NASA? The Senate is proposing to cut the NASA budget by half a billion dollars. That is, a whopping two and a half percent. What is it cutting? Technologies. What kind of technologies? The kind of technologies that would allow us to go affordably beyond Earth orbit. Technologies that the Augustine panel called game-changing. Isn't that what the Senate launch system is for? Only if we want to do it unaffordably. The Senate launch system by itself does not allow trips into the solar system. You still need departure stages and other things that there's no money for because Congress insists on spending billions on the Senate launch system. Though not enough billions to actually complete it or operate it. Do we not need a heavy lift launcher? We may need heavy lift, but we can't afford the Senate launch system. There are better ways to get it if needed. Well, if they're not funding the game-changing technologies, what are they funding? Landscaping and janitorial services. Landscaping and janitorial services? Yes. They were very proud. They said that they were preserving middle-class jobs. Landscaping is a middle-class job? Apparently, at least at NASA. It may be that higher-wage landscapers are required to keep up all of the expensive lawn ornaments resulting from NASA programs that have been cancelled or never flew. Is there anything in the NASA Charter about preserving landscaping jobs? No. Is there anything in the NASA Charter about keeping janitors employed? Not that I'm aware of. Isn't NASA supposed to be pushing the boundaries of space technology? One would think. What else isn't getting funded so that NASA can build the rocket to nowhere? The program to develop competitive capability to deliver crew to the ISS. After the space shuttle retires this year, won't we be dependent on the Russians for crew transfer and lifeboats until we develop an alternative? Yes. Aren't the Russians still helping Iran develop missiles and nuclear weapons? Yes. If we continue to purchase services from the Russians, doesn't that mean that the Congress will have to grant more waivers for them from the Non-Proliferation Act, removing all incentives for them to stop helping our enemy Iran with nukes and delivery systems? Yes. So why isn't Congress properly funding the competitive crew projects that are the quickest way of ending our dependence on the Russians? Congress says that we can't count on the commercial space companies to safely put crews into orbit. Isn't Boeing developing a crew capsule based on the Apollo capsule that it built in the 1960s? Yes. Cannot it go up on an Atlas V, which hasn't had a launch failure in years, and to which we trust billion-dollar defense satellites? Yes. Did not space exploration technologies demonstrate the delivery and return of a pressurized capsule in December? Yes. But Congress believes that they cannot do the job? Yes. Why not? Apparently they don't believe that anything can be done for the first time. They believe that NASA must develop the Senate launch system and the Orion capsule as a backup in case all of the other providers don't come through even though it could be launched on a smaller rocket than the Senate launch system. It's sort of an insurance policy. You might call it a lack of faith-based initiative. Will not the Senate launch system in Orion cost more than 10 times as much as all of the other providers combined and take longer to develop? Yes. Hasn't the GAO and NASA told Congress that it cannot develop the Senate launch system in Orion for the amount of money that Congress has authorized? Yes. Don't insurance policies usually cost a lot less than the thing that is being insured against? Yes. Then why is the Congress buying an insurance policy that costs more than 10 times as much and has a low probability of success? 
This is the same Congress that has multiple redundant programs to help U.S. citizens manage their personal finances while running up trillions of dollars in debt. It's also the one that has pledged to end earmarks. Except, apparently, for Utah and Alabama. You figure it out.